Well, we're going to talk about a television show. Television show. Again, I think we talked about this before. We have. I feel like we've talked about this before. I don't remember when, but we definitely have. I'm looking it up. All right. My, my search on my website is very funky, so. Oh, no. This might take a, a, t a hot second. There it is. 248 is the last time we talked about this. This was in September of 2021. Oh, wow. So that was just the first two seasons. It's been a minute. It has been a minute, yes. You're correct. Correct indeed. Uh, hello, welcome to this week's episode of the Season Let Me Check Up OVA. It's a podcast where we have conversations about video games, anime, and manga. Hello, I'm Jared, joined as always by Doc Allen, and Ladium. Hello, hello. This is episode number 319. And we're going to chit chat about season three of Mythic Quest. Mm -hmm. The season came out a few months back. And it started in November. It. Yeah, November of 2022, wrapping up its final episode on January 6th of 2023 with a 10 episode run. Which I guess is technically the longest season they've done is it yeah because uh season one's nine. Oh wow yeah season two is one two three four five six seven eight nine as well so yeah and, and then just the special so yeah it is the longest one two two t ten episodes longest season <laughs> it uh it i didn't realize that it was over when it was over yeah, like I, I remember I was going into this and I, I forgot, A, that these were 30-minute episodes, <laughs> for one. Oops. And B, I was like, I don't remember how long these seasons are. Is this like going to be like 12 episodes or something? And then like you just get to the end it's like, oh, I guess that's it. Yep. Just 10. Just 10. That's all you need. Um, And they were released like week to week, so that's how I watched it. Yeah, that's, yeah. That is how they, they've done it previously as well. Mm -hmm. I think, no, I guess the first season they just kind of dumped it once. The season before that, they did it weekly. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. Season three. Uh, we talked about this, you know, after I think we, or at least I, at least I watched it because I watched it a little bit after the fact that when you did, mm -hmm. um, where we were kind of very, I wouldn't say we were like very like, oh man, I don't know about this going into it, but we were kind of just like curious to see how they were going to pull off a third season after how like the second season ends essentially where everything kind of like it kind of feels like up. it feels like yeah you get a little bit of a wrap up of, of this entire story and then here we have a third season with 10 more episodes and it's like how exactly are they going to navigate this in terms of story and everything and also without making this feel like you know we've kind of we've milked this as far as we can and are just getting as much out of it as possible and it's not as great right so that was definitely a, a a question going into this and I think we would say coming out of it like we were pleasantly surprised by this season a thousand percent like it was still very fun I think they found ways to to incorporate new stories into the series and I, I think it helped as well really like they had they added more characters to the core group of characters they had more different character interactions that you would maybe not expect mm -hmm. from the first two seasons and that also helped in terms of storytelling you know going throughout the season so they were able to do different things than we were expecting and i think as well the you know the overarching story like i think worked in a way that fits within the narrative of everything within the series as well mm -hmm. so i think all of that was good it's now we're back at we're back at the point though though at the end of this where it's like how are they going to do another season of this? Right, right. Yeah, we we were talking about that. That I feel like the next season has to be the last because otherwise it's going to be like, what do you do? Yeah, I, I like. Yeah, I think we talked about this after I finished as well. But like, I don't see there being much else that they can really do after this. Like maybe just another like like another season to wrap everything up with a nice little bow and then send it off. Mm -hmm. But I don't really see how you do like a fifth season of this. But again, like hey, they surprised us with this, That's so maybe true. they could do it. But it is one of those things you get you you start to look at and you're like, 
how much is too much? I think as long, like, at what point is it just, like, outstaying its welcome and, like, e- even though it still has, like, funny moments, you realize, like, oh, this should have ended, like, two years ago. Yeah. Um, but, like, this one didn't have that. And I-, I worry that if they continue it past season four, that, like, you're going to start breaking some of the-, the characterization that they've worked so hard to build. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And, like, the the relationships that... that um, I really like what makes this show so good. Yeah, 100%. Like, obviously, season four is going to have some shakeups because you have some new characters interacting with each other um, in a in a wild way. Yes. Um, <laughs> but... Like I, I don't, I don't want to see like the characterization suffer because like Ubisoft wants a fifth season. <laughs> yeah, that would be unfortunate for yeah. sure. Yeah. Also, I don't know if Ubisoft actually gets a say in that, do they? I don't know actually. Or, or is it Apple that says that? Regardless, whoever makes that decision. I, I want them to understand that, like, hey, sometimes it's better when you just wrap it up and it it's good to go. You don't have to keep it going forever. Yeah, I think Ubisoft is kind of just like a consultant on the show. Oh, well, that's an interesting thing, given the joke that was in there. <laughs> yeah. Yikes! No kidding. Ugh. Um, <laughs> hey, let us consult you on the fact that we have sexual harassment. <laughs> problems yeah okay so there is a joke in this season where they literally make a reference to like i think david gets a call from montreal which is allegedly ubisoft in this universe right um and one of the characters makes a remark like oh did you get named the sexual harassment lawsuit and it's just like oh boy yeah (laughs) timely references yeah woo oh man um little on the nose there a little on the nose there but um one of the things that made me like realize that the people who are making this do know something about like games and the game industry because like sometimes you wonder like oh um, you know are they just kind of throwing this together but like no there is definitely one moment in this besides that that i was like oh they do actually know what they're talking about and like, give a shit about it mm-hmm. huh um because it would be it would be super easy to just like assume that you know it it they have these these things that are very obvious about the game industry but like you know maybe they don't necessarily care as much I don't know right um but there were there were a few things in this one that was like okay yeah yeah you you get it and I'm really really surprised that that joke made. It. <laughs> Did same. <laughs> wow. My I was God. Very caught off guard by that. <laughs> yup. Yup. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna go- kind of talk about some of the episodes that we enjoyed and everything. Um, just do things like that because I think that's just the easiest way to do this. Mm-hmm. I thought one of the things interesting about this season as well was that like they let a lot of the cast themselves do be episode directors yeah which i thought was a a very interesting idea when you're like this far in just be like ah whatever go do what you want (laughs) y'all got this it was legit i don't think like it it made any detriment or anything yeah there was also like they also had writing on there as well um but yeah i thought it was a an interesting thing to see when you would like get to the credits and everything Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely uh, I think the first thing we have to talk about is how they write out CW. Yes. Because he obviously did not come back for the third season. Right. So they decide in the first episode, hey, we're just going to kill him off. Yep, he's dead. <laughs> and it, it all like circles around like this idea that like, oh, we're having a birthday party for him and all this. But no one, he, he doesn't show up or anything. And they just read this whole letter and be like, if you read this, I am dead. <laughs> Yep. I went out in this giant blaze of glory and drove myself into the Grand Canyon. And now I'm on a satellite with my, and I'm going to fly over you. <laughs> Everyone's just like, oh, all right. 
Interesting. Um, okay. <laughs> which that actor, he's in something like that's coming out and pretty big right now. Um, so that's probably why. Mm-hmm. If I just couldn't because of time commitments. Yeah. Um, but also it was really funny that it's just like, all right, well I guess he's a satellite. Woo. <laughs> Um, did I ever tell you that's how my dad said he wanted to go out was to like drive a flaming semi truck into a like off a cliff? That I I can believe that. Yeah, yeah. So very yeah. much can believe that. Apparently, that's a thing that people want to do at times. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's how they kill him off, and I was yeah. like, okay. Yeah, I, it's believable, honestly. I did like the gag, though, as well, that, like, the Mythic Quest office and uh, Ian and Poppy's office are literally on the same building, but just on different floors. Yep, yeah, that was really good. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, we haven't we haven't been up here in a year. We haven't seen y'all. It's real, man, real interesting. Grim Pops is, like, a few floors down. <laughs> yeah, it just got down a few floors, like, oh, here we are. <laughs> that, uh, was, that was a good gag. Yes, uh... I did like the idea, um, basically throughout the entirety of the the season of Brad being like, I'm on the straight and narrow now because I'm out of prison and I'm reforming. Yep. <laughs> I'm the janitor. I'm the janitor. <laughs> but he's still just like incredibly shady and just doing weird things and it's just like, oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> the whole time Davis is like, I'm going to, I'm going to find, you're not, you're, you're up to something. <laughs> He's, He's like, yeah, like, I'm cleaning the toilets. That's what I'm yeah. up to. I'm the janitor. <laughs> Doing a uh, good job at it too. Do you want me to? Do you want me to dust your office? <laughs> He's got that like crazy janitor outfit on. So good. It's really funny. Uh, I think one of the best first or first couple of episodes is the brunch episode. The, the brunch. The brunch episode, which puts us with a weird trio of Poppy, Joe, and Rachel. It's just hilarious. Because <laughs> it's like, here's three people that you would not expect to be hanging out. And they're all going to brunch and just not understanding the concept of brunch. The brunch. <laughs> the brunch. The it's, brunch. It's just brunch. It's just brunch. The brunch. That's why that's why we say it down in, Aust- in, in, in Australia. <laughs> the brunch. The brunch. Um... Yeah, and, like, Joe decides that they are all best friends now because they went yeah. to the brunch together. I, I like the idea of, like, her, like, actually getting friends. Yeah. Because, like, you know, she, throughout the series, she's just been, like, the, the evil, not evil, just, like, very... She's cunning, weird. <laughs> very weird, right-wing assistant character. Yeah. And for how, now she actually has, has, has friends and, like, has to understand what to do during friendships and everything, and how do I actually, you know handle people having emotions <laughs> take them to a, a thing where you drive a tank and crush cars which honest to god sounds like a lot of fun yeah <laughs> i would do that <laughs> it's just so funny because like poppy and rachel are having a rough time and they just get very emotional at brunch and she's just holding her like uh and then she just takes them to vegas and they're like why are we in vegas what are we doing we're gonna do my version of brunch and then go to a gun range <laughs> Like, and they're they're nervous at first because like oh I don't like guns I'm not into that and she's like no no that's not what we're doing <laughs> and then they just drive a tank and they're just like yeah Woo! let's crush things which um I brought this up when I was first watching is and I feel like it's worth mentioning and it's sad that it's worth mentioning this but it is but I really really appreciate that they have two characters in this that are like they two women characters who visibly have some gray hair mm-hmm. or are completely gray in one case um, because that doesn't happen like you never ever see that so it was neat to me that it's like alright well they just that's how they are yeah Um, like wow women are allowed to age what shocking what Shocking. Shocking. But it was great. It made me really happy. So did watching tanks crush cars. I would totally do that. I kind of want to do that. I wonder if there's actually a place to do that. Uh, Probably. Apparently Vegas. Yeah. 
Well, I'm not that far from Vegas, I guess. <laughs> um, I really like the inclusion of Carol more in this season. Carol was like my favorite character in this season. <laughs> She's so funny, and I love that she just refers to herself in third person all the time. Yes. <laughs> the hoodie. <laughs> oh, Carol's so good. Like, Carol's always been a really good character. Mm-hmm. Um, but she got some really good screen time uh, this season, and she, 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 man, it was funny. That and Perry, her interactions with her, Brad. Yeah, putting her with like Brad and Rachel was just very good because her and Brad just could riff off each other in very good ways. <laughs> yep. Really and just him, funny. him, him being sneaky and like talking her into like getting more into monetization. She's like, "Yeah, I can do this." <laughs> and like the whole time, she's like, she's in this like she feels like she's in this figurehead position, and she tries to launch this thing, and is like, "Oh, I'm gonna get fired! I'm gonna get fired!" And then there's like, "Oh, they promoted me! I got an actual budget now! I have more power!" <laughs> and they're just like, they're both just confused by like, "Huh? What? Huh? What?" <laughs> it's so funny. It's so good because she gets like a new title when she like when the season starts, and she's like, "Okay, well, I have this new title, but like, I don't have any money to like hire anybody else, and like, mm. what do I actually do? I don't do anything." And then monetization thing comes through, and then she has the title and the budget, and she's like, "Wow, Carol's Carol's doing awesome. <laughs> I love Carol." Uh. <laughs> so good so good uh i thought the christmas episode was just kind of there it was kind of it, it it felt more like one of the specials yeah than like actual plot i mean if at least it was around christmas when they released it like um yeah the last season of ted lasso they put a christmas episode in the middle of the season but that was airing in like the spring oh. <laughs> so it was very out of place oh and kind of felt the same where it's just like, I guess they just made a Christmas episode. <laughs> huh. But yeah, this also just kind of felt like we just made a Christmas episode. <laughs> yeah. that I mean, that's that's really what it felt like. It, it was uh, it was fine. Like I said, it felt more like one of the specials than like actual plot other than like, I, I think that like the monetization stuff happens in this one and um, you have like Ian and Poppy actually like give some form of a about David. Yeah, they're just trying to help. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it doesn't go well at first, but... No. Which episode is it that David um, tries to go down to Grim Pop and gets stuck? Oh, man. I don't remember which episode it was, but it was so funny. Oh, which one is that? <laughs> I don't remember either. It might be later in the season. Okay. But um, yeah. <laughs> Just because, like, their whole office is very, like, futuristic looking. Mm-hmm. And, like, he comes down to the elevator and he's like, hey, there's no one there. So he's like, oh, I guess I'll just leave. And they can't find the, the button for the elevator and just can't leave. So he's just stuck there for, like, hours until they come back. <laughs> <laughs> their office is wild because a lot of it is set up, like, with projections. So, yeah. like, there's this one part where, um, like, Ian and Poppy are in an argument and they're just changing, like, the projection pictures on the wall. And... Mm-hmm. Um, arguing about like temperature and all kinds of crazy stuff. It's it's a weird office. Yeah. Um. Y- yeah, yeah. The Christmas episode was weird. Um. I will never say his name right. Joe. The Joe guy. Big Joe. Big Joe. Joe, I don't, I don't know how to really say his name, last name either. Magniello. 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 I don't know. Big um, Joe. Big Joe. He, he was, uh, he was an interesting inclusion. Yeah, because like there, there's a subplot in here where they're gonna make a Mythic Quest movie, so they hire, they, he, they bring him in because he's a big fan of the game as well. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to get him to sign on and everything, and eventually he does. Oh man, the, 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 <laughs> the face off when he goes up when Ian shows up, like. I'm gonna tell this guy off and everything. <laughs> and he goes into like the vocab studio and they just size each other up. Yep. And he just like takes off his mask, like, 
oh, I'm such a big fan. Can you sign my mask? I, if, you know, if you if I see your signature now, I'll never want to take it off. And I just like it's overjoyed. Like, oh yeah, of course, yeah, man. Cool. <laughs> this like, guy's great. Oh no. <laughs> well, and the whole like um, dinner thing with with other Joe. Yes. Where she's like supposed to have whatever she's supposed to say like piped into her. Mm-hmm. And he keeps like telling her to smile, and she's doing like really creepy smiles. <laughs> and he's also like in a two way call with like with her, and then the the art department in terms yep. of the monetization thing. Yep. So it's just like every all the wires are getting crossed. <laughs> it's just a mess. It's a huge, but he still signs on. Um, can't, and, can't hire Brad Pitt though. No, can't five hire Brad actor, Pitt. Get a five foot five foot eight performance. <laughs> God. Don't want that. It's so funny because there's there's even a joke um, when when uh, Joe meets um, Ian that he's like, I thought you would be taller. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh no. <laughs> then they, you know, just both get into mocap suits and hang out and talk about how like Ian should have the like his life story turned into a movie <laughs> D- David wants to like murder them both at that point yeah it's really yeah. good Ooh. and then of course Joe being Joe sneakily fixes things yeah <laughs> man I uh, I really like the flashback episode this season which oh, they, so they good they really do good jobs on their flashback episodes. Like they've done it in every other season before this as well. So mm-hmm. I'm not surprised in that aspect, but it was interesting to see like them go into like the backstories of Ian and Poppy. Mm-hmm. Cause we really hadn't got much of that per se. So kind of see how like those two grew up and like how they become the way they become essentially mm-hmm. was an interesting thing to see. Like, I am just like a very creative kid who just you know wanted to show off his creativity, but like people at school don't understand it. His mom kind of does, but she's also battling her own mental health issues, and like the dad wanting to like come in and scoop him away and all that sort of stuff is all it's real sad. Like his mom, like understands it to an extent. She really is supportive of it. Is, yes, is yes, the yes. big thing. Um, but she can only be so supportive because of, of the things that she's going through. Um, but, like, I love the scene in the store where she, like, throws all the things in the air and the the clerk's like, what are you doing? <laughs> There's like, she's like, run, let's go! Run, go! Um, <laughs> but, like, she she gets upset because the the teachers are like, yeah, no, he's, he's doing everything wrong. And she's like, but he's, like, he's doing what he feels like he should be doing. He's being creative and um, like they give him a chance at one point to like redo a a project where he's supposed to talk about a planet um, and he's supposed to talk about like a real planet. And she's like, yep, yep, we'll do that. We'll do that. And then they get home and she's like, okay, talk about your planet. Not, not any other planet. It's fine. Um, But you do get to see like some of that struggle because like she has the, the day where she just cannot get out of bed and he's trying to figure out like well how do i get to school and like grandpa can't do anything because grandpa's at work and um then like you said his dad comes in and even like gets mad that they call him ian yeah he's like his name is ian Ian. it's it's wild that even like you see the dad for maybe like a minute or two in the episode at all Mm -hmm. but you see where ian gets all his weird like um What's the word I'm looking for? Like his weird, the ways he moves and stuff, and like how he mannerisms. Acts. His mannerisms, yes, just from like his dad. Yeah. And also, I guess you can see as well, like where he kind of gets that <laughs> side of him as well from like staying with his dad for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, Poppy, on the other hand, you know, is just like she's a young girl who wants to play video games all the time, and her parents are like, no, we don't want you to play video games. Play the piano. <laughs> Video games are bad. It was mostly your mom who's just like, I hate video games. <laughs> yeah, because her dad, he he he's supportive of it to an extent, but he also realizes mm-hmm. like, you know, hey, your mom doesn't really want you to do this, and um, and they, 
she has a really hard time making friends and um they're they're worried that because she like fixates on this that she's not going to make friends yeah um so they they're trying to encourage things that would make her like be more i guess social and socially acceptable mm-hmm. um and she just wants to play final fantasy 9 she just wants to play final fantasy 9 <laughs> that's all she wants she wants to, to beat Kuja. <laughs> Which, this is what I was alluding to earlier in the episode, that I was so frustrated during this episode at first. Because she kept saying, like, oh, you know, I'm going to fight Kuja. This is the final boss of Final Fantasy IX. Like, Kuja's not the final boss of Final Fantasy IX. I don't know what they're doing. And then... And then... She finally gets access to the internet. Yeah, because, like, she doesn't have the internet, so, like contextually like it makes sense why she would think that that's the final boss because like you know yeah, totally. the story of final fantasy 9 makes you kind of believe that but obviously it's a final fantasy game so that doesn't happen yeah curve but you. she she goes like looks up an faq and is just like wait what this isn't the final boss what there's there's not something else after <laughs> it's real good it's real good and i was like okay you know what they know what they're talking about they did this to me on purpose they made me think they were doing it wrong but mm-hmm. that's because that's how it was like I thought Kuja was going to be the final boss when I played Final Fantasy IX for the first time. Guess what? Kuja's not the final boss. How would I have known that? Until I played it, I wouldn't have because yeah. I, I didn't, I mean, I didn't really have fast internet or anything at the point. I had, I had internet, but um, I wasn't like going and looking up FAQs because they took forever to load. <laughs> um, you had to get all that cool ASCII art. I mean, yeah, you did, but, like, man, I had internet in rural West Tennessee. Like, it, it wasn't good. Yeah. Um. So it took forever to get an FAQ, and for, a, like, an FAQ as long as the game is Final Fantasy nine, it's gonna It's going to be a minute. <laughs> you're going to be there for a while. Um. So, like, that was a big surprise for me, too. And so, like, I... I it it threw me back at that point because I was like, okay, I get it. I get what she's going through here. Makes total sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I did I did like as well like the way her dad gets her to like start buckling down about playing piano and getting you know ready for that recital. It's just like he tries to relate it towards like video game stuff, being like, oh, this recital is the final boss, and you need to train to get up and defeat it essentially. Mm-hmm. And then also kind of like. <laughs> bribes her as well being like I'll, I'll get you something cool if you do the recital <laughs> which I thought it was interesting as well that like the way her gift that she gets is just a bicycle mm-hmm. and she uses it to, to basically just go to the library to like look at the internet and find all this new stuff that she never knew about because they thought that she was getting the bike to like go be social yeah and, and so hang she, out with tells her, she tells her sister to like eat shit and then yeah. just runs away it's funny <laughs> um but they, the way they kind of connect these two is that, like, when she goes to the the library and, like, learns, you know, all about the end of Final Fantasy IX and everything, she find, she stumbles across, like, this website. It's like, make your own games. Here's a bunch of user-created games and all that sort of stuff. And she's like, oh, my gosh, look at all these games I've never heard about and I could play just now and everything. And she stumbles upon this one game called uh, Sarayan, mm-hmm. which is named after the planet that Ion was making when he was a kid. And it is a game that he made... You know, sometime between then and when Poppy discovers it. Right. And it leads us to, like, the end of the episode where, like, Poppy's in college and listening to a talk from Ian, and he has the worst the beard worst ever. The worst beard ever. <laughs> but it's, it's so amazing. In, it's so in character, though. <laughs> it is. <laughs> oh, man. God, it's bad. Uh, Yeah, man. <laughs> I just laughed a lot when I saw him in that his ponytail beard it was insane. but she's uh. like very very clearly just fascinated by this whole talk while everybody else is just kind of like ah, oh, yeah it's a college yeah. talk and, she, and she's like, still she's ahead. still very socially awkward as well well yeah <laughs> i mean she still is even now in the in the present yeah. but but um, it, it's a there's a good scene there between them where like she goes to talk to him he's like oh you know I was ins- I aspired to make games from you and everything he's like oh yeah you know this one game I made blah 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 she's no 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 I I you know I was talking about when I played Sarayan back in the day and he's like he takes like a, he's just a split second where he's like wait huh huh Haven't not the one about I was that thinking. game in a while yeah 
I thought was a real good moment. It's like you see like how those two essentially kind of meet up and become like the duo that they are in the present and everything. Right, right. Which of course leads up to them having another spiff in a fight. Ah, which I guess we should probably mention playpen at some point. Yeah, so there's a thing um, throughout the season where like Poppy's trying to make this this her new game. It's like, Hera, her new, it's her new thing, yes. Um, it's, just a, it's basically, I think, a new MMO mm-hmm. that she's trying to make. Um, and she wants it to be hers. And, like, at one point, she just thought, she makes this, like, thing called Playpen, just, like, give us busy work for um, Ian Dana. and Dana. And, essentially, it's just, like, a user-created um, tool, essentially. So, you can make your own games and everything. And she just basically is like, yeah, I, I whipped that up in, a, in, like, a little bit, and it's whatever. Who cares? It's, it's kind it's, of crap. She calls it Yeah. <laughs> And, like, Dana has to, like, tell her, like, no, you can make real cool things with this thing. It's a really neat user-created experience that, like, anybody could, like, make whatever they want and share that with the world, essentially. Hey, look, you can go fishing. You can go fishing. Even though that is not what Poppy thought you were doing. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, so that that becomes a whole subplot of, like, them pivoting to, like, try and make Playpen a thing over the game she was making. Mm-hmm. Um, because... Later in the season, they get her and I get into a, a bigger fight than I think probably normal that they've had in the seasons prior to this. Right. Um, where they kind of lay things out there where Poppy feels like Ian isn't trying to help her at all because it's her game and not his. And he basically admits like, yeah, I, I'm not helping you in this way because mm-hmm. I don't really know how to help, essentially. And she basically takes that as like just a huge betrayal, essentially, and kind of just tells him to f*** off and and leaves him be and that lets him he he also like realizes at the end of that as well as like oh i i messed up i messed up bad i messed up i don't remember like did did the cubicle part happen in this this scenario or was that a different part uh, like when they were arguing because the cubicle was a really funny joke i don't i don't remember specifically but yeah like <laughs> there's a seed where ian's trying to get poppy I don't is what I don't remember exactly the the premise of what he's trying to do. I think he's just trying to get her like she wants she wants different lighting and temperature control. Right, they're just having these these are. I think this is before this. They're just having these okay. weird arguments about what the the state of the office should be. And he's just like, I got you this cube that you can be in. It has your own lighting, your own temperature, and everything. Look, it even blends into the background. It's great. <laughs> and she's just like, you invented the cubicle. <laughs> he's just like. Dang it! <laughs> I did. It's really good, but yeah, they they are having this like major major blow up because he he does admit like yeah I'm not supporting you. Mm-hmm. And there's also like a scene earlier where like Dana's talking to her and she's like, "Why don't you think of Mythic Quest as your game as well?" Mm-hmm. And like she Poppy doesn't have like a response for it because she's never like had that thought of like it, this is kind of like my game as well yeah because <laughs> like, i built it dana is like yeah playpen is my game and she's like no that playpen is my game i created it and dana's like no like why didn't you think the mythic quest was your game like mm-hmm. it, it was um there's also this great scene where um she's talking to dana and basically it's like how do i become like how do i get into your head <laughs> how do i become confident how do, how do I, I get that com- how do i get that confidence because <laughs> we gotta go talk to VCs and and get money. Boy, how does that not work? No. Nope. Yeah, let's go to let's go to the same VC that I told to suck my d- my duck. <laughs> Sorry, yes, autocorrect. Suck my duck. <laughs> I'm sure that'll go well. Yep, it did not go well. No. And he informs her that like all VCs in town already know about it, and no one's gonna pay for it. And lo and behold that's exactly what happens yay uh so that basically leads us to the end of the the season where like we kind of have to fix a bunch of things here um Um, before that we we do have the like weird side part where um like carol is is doing such a good job at like diversifying the office that um like she she's having issues firing people yeah (laughs) Um, and then she finds that the only group that she can fire are the testers because they're the only ones who are like young white dudes. 
Um, and, and she's testers like, and video games don't have any rights. And they don't have any rights. That, well, that's true. Ooh. Um, I think mean, that's the other subtext of that. There, there was. Yeah, absolutely. And you have Phil, who's like the the art guy who's been in like just run over the whole whole series. He's like, it's the year of Phil. <laughs> Because he's trying to like, he's trying to show discrimination that, like, he, lawsuit. He's being discriminated because he's old. Because he's over forty. <laughs> and then they just bring a tester that are like older than him, and he's just like, "Dang Damn it!" it. <laughs> it's, it's just, testers are so funny. <laughs> um, because the the Mythic Quest movie gets canceled. And, yes, because essentially, um, like the the player base is dwindling because they don't have any new content. And so there's no reason to make a movie. So David wants new content, and he's, like, asking people. And these guys are like, I'm a former math teacher. and I'm trying to reconnect, reconnect with my adult son. He had, like, the anger management's in there at some point. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just like, oh, man. This, they're, like, supporting each other. And, like, okay, you got this, man. You got this. <laughs> it's so <laughs> good. so funny. Uh, oh, no, I snorted. But, like, he also has to, like, hear all these ideas from everyone in the studio, and no one has good ideas. He's just, like, sitting there the whole time. He's like, these all suck. We're doomed. It's, like, some some STDs at one point. Yeah. And, and there's the one guy who's, like, yeah, basically, like, you're going to play as a dude who, like, bones everybody, and that's it. His secret weapon down there. <laughs> <laughs> It was a really funny scene, but you're just like, oh, God, nobody has a good idea. Yeah. Um, um, which then leads us to the blow up. Yeah. The, the, the subplot in the episode as well is that, like, uh, Brad gets off of parole and has no idea what he wants to do. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> he's like, I could come back and be the head of monetization, but that's not a challenge anymore. Nope. I don't know what I want to do. Joe resigns and acts like she gets fired <laughs> to make David seem like he's terrifying and has he's power. powerful. Yeah, <laughs> that's where she's like, she makes this whole blow up scene and then like is yelling at at the rest of the the staff and like looks back at him and is like, good luck. <laughs> and she just like, storms out like, oh, it's so terrible. And then fired. <laughs> so it's really good. It's uh, really really good. I I do think that it's funny the the scene with Brad and Pearl that they're like, all right, you're on parole, and now you can go be an upstanding citizen. And he's like, I don't like that I, part. I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't like that part. <laughs> like, God, don't say that at your parole hearing. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, wild man. Try and, well, and then you have the two of them trying to catch a rat. and Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> they were trying to like murder people. The best part is like everyone. David comes up to everyone's like, "I got a rat in my office." I'm like, all right, who is it? Who will take care of? It? Like, no, an right. actual animal. And everyone he says that to is like, "Who's the rat? Who's the rat?" I'm like, yeah. no, it's just the, the animal, the rat. There's a, there's an actual animal. <laughs> <laughs> and then there are babies. Then there are babies, and they go live with them. Yep, and his and uh, his uh, suburb. Yeah. Uh, Dana decides to form her own company because she hates working for Ian and Poppy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then she gets Joe and Brad to work for her, which is a that's a wild trio. That's a wild trio. <laughs> and then just also take the Grim Pop office because I don't know. I guess. I guess. <laughs> this is very funny. Yeah, because Rachel's like, oh man, I got this like amazing check. I I I can get avocado toast for every single I day of the year. I can support you if you're looking for a job. She's like, no, I'm just going to make my own job. Yeah, and, and then she even at one point is like, well, Mythic Quest is looking for a new thing, and like that could be you. You could be the new thing. And you're like, I don't want to work for David. I don't want to work for me. I want to work for me. But yeah, they just like take over that office. But the funniest part is um, when like she asks for a coffee or something, you just see Joe just like freaking tear go screen on, on it. it. Oh, good. It's so funny. I also liked how like Rachel's leaving and Brad's like, "Oh, I'm gonna help your, I'm gonna help your your girlfriend, you know, be great at this by also crushing you and destroying you and being an incredibly better at my job than you are." Mm -hmm. Alright, see you later. Clutching the check in her hand. <laughs> yes. He's like, I can hear the paper. <laughs> um, and of course, Poppy and I, uh solve things by just hashing out their differences and being like 
we're both shit people, but also we we do good things that work well together, but not separately, and we just need to focus on that. And we need to focus on what we're good at. Yes. And they do this all over buffalo chicken pizza and green soda. <laughs> She makes I and eat it. He's like, I can't eat this. I haven't had carbs in like six months. I haven't had dairy in in, in a couple of months. It's, oh no! And she's like looking at him like, mm. he's like, all right. I love that she makes him drink it. And he's like, what flavor is this green? Green's not a flavor. <laughs> Green's not a flavor. <laughs> it's real good. But they 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 figure it out. They mm -hmm. figure out their dynamic, which is is mm -hmm. good. Yeah, I I, I think like we said, or like when we were finish watching it and everything like they can't have another one of these in the next season no like this should be the this is it this is the be all end all you figured it out maybe you have a couple arguments here and there but we can't have a huge blow up like we've had before like that no nah, no nah, nah. is no like i can i could see them like squabbling because they do that that's just what they do yeah exactly um, that's that's their dynamic but like you can't have another like break like this right um it would feel disingenuous because mm -hmm. this was a really good moment for both of them. Like they really just break it all down. Um, I, I do appreciate that. Um, he's like, I love you. You love me. Like, let's do this. It's just like, I do love you. He's like, I know I covered that. <laughs> we already covered it. Come on. Keep up. <laughs> it's really funny. Uh. Which and then, then uh, I guess brings us to the end where yeah, where they come back to the Mythic Quest office. And they're like, David, we've solved your problem. We're gonna put a playpen in the Mythic Quest, and now all the users can create their own content. Expansion solved. Which essentially is just them. Hey, you heard of Fortnite Creative? Well, we're doing that in this MMO. <laughs> just essentially the same thing. But that's that's how they're gonna get back to Mythic Quest. Which I think it makes sense. Like if you're if potentially the next season is the last season, it would. I feel like it would be better served off if they were back there mm -hmm. and they could finish their story there fully. I agree. And then eventually right off into the sunset. It was also funny that they used the Welcome Back Cotter theme song <laughs> um, when they when they got there. But you even still, like, when they're announcing that they're coming back, you have that, like, I am Poppy dynamic hilarity of, like, them trying to pull it off. Like, they're trying to say the word simultaneously. And yeah. She's, She's getting it off on timing or not saying the right word. She's like, you, you just you just say it. you're better at this than I. You, you're good at this. This is what we just established. You you do this part. <laughs> uh, really, really yeah, funny. I thought it was a fun season. Like like I said, going in, I we were kind of apprehensive about what it potentially could be, but I had a fun time throughout it. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm curious to see how they do the next season. Hopefully. Hopefully it's the last one. Hopefully it's the last one. Not because yeah. we dislike it, but because we don't want it to go like we don't yeah, want it to outstay yeah. its welcome. Yeah. Um, they are doing a spinoff series. Oh. Uh, apparently in December they Apple TV ordered a show called Mere Mortals, um, which is going to be written by Ashley Birch and I think some other people from the the series as well, which is about I guess like employees, players, and fans of Mythic Quest. Huh. And it also it says this series has been compared to the standalone episodes. Oh. But it's, all, it's supposed to be like new characters as well. So like I guess its own thing. So this doesn't say anything of like when time frame when that should come out or anything. But yeah, apparently that's the that's the thing. Interesting. The thing that's coming. I yeah. I didn't realize that. That's cool though. Um, I mentioned this to you several times while we were, while we were both watching this and partially because of the thing coming up, but my mom kept telling me when they were watching <laughs> it that I remind her of Poppy. And the whole time I'm just like, am I that big of an ass? No. Does my mom see me as a <laughs> Because like, I can see behaviors Poppy does for sure. Yeah, I think she, I think she, most... She's mostly thinking of like the the eccentric eccentricities. I think so, and um, of her, not that. Hey, I'm a I can be a real turd at times. <laughs> <laughs> um, like that. There's one part where she has like candy that she's like, "That's a that's a Brett." 
<laughs> um, but she just is constantly surrounded by candy, and it's like, okay, I can see that part for sure. Yeah. And um, there's another part where she's talking to Dana, and um, Dana's like, can you stay silent for 10 seconds and not think of anything? And she's like, all I hear is screaming. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. 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 Like, you know this. Most people don't know this, but, like, I have to sleep with the TV on. Because otherwise, I get too into my head and I can't do anything, like nothing at all. I constantly have some kind of sound around me <laughs> because mm. that's what it is. I just get into this weird existential dread. So there are parts of her that I'm like, yeah, okay, I see it. But I'm also just like, mom, I hope you don't think I'm an a. <laughs> <laughs> but for the record, having candy at your desk, good idea. Yeah, who doesn't want a nice little snack? And a green flavored soda. Is that just Surge? Yeah, probably. Like, I'm pretty sure Surge is just green flavored soda. That's a reference I just made. <laughs> anyway, Mythic Quest Season 3, woo! That yeah, was fun. I would. I, I'm definitely interested in crushing cars with a tank now. Yes. Yep. I agree. <laughs> the, br the brunch. The brunch. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's gonna do it for this week's episode. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like more from us, head on over to seasonalanimecheckup.com or sac.cool, where you can find past episodes of this podcast and other podcasts like Jared and Al Watch. You also find columns and reviews on the site as well. If you'd like more from Anladium, go to anladium.com. She's got columns and reviews. You can follow us on Twitter and TikTok at Anime Checkup. And you can buy our books, One Shiny Moment, a critical analysis of Love, Life, Sunshine, and Hot Tubs, and Pac-Man on Amazon.com. And you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash SACOVA. Buy us a slice of pizza, get access to unedited versions of the podcast early. And a whole wealth of bonus content as well. Om nom nom nom. Om nom 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 nom. Next week we'll talk about something else. Because that's what we do. Valentine's Day episode, right? Uh, I mean, it depends on what you wanted to declare the Valentine's Day episode. Okay. We'll figure that out. All right. <laughs>